All right, let's try this again. This lesson is going to show you how to find the area of triangles. Um, let's just start with the basic one. Okay, if you have a triangle, maybe a right triangle like this, and you have a base and you have a height, and you know it's the height because it says 90 degrees, a great formula to use would be one half times base times height. It could look a variety of ways. Maybe it's a triangle like this where they tell you the base and then inside you see a little dotted altitude. It's got to be perpendicular and this would be the height. You could also use one half base times height. This is not a height. Or sometimes it's an obtuse triangle where it's like this and you have the base and then way outside here they'll show some, some dotted lines for the altitude and that's the height. Okay, This is a great formula to use when we know the base and the height. Okay, but that's not very exciting and that is certainly not pre-calculus. What if we have an SAS triangle? Okay, let's just draw a triangle right here, ABC. So, for example, across from angle A we'll have little side A, across from angle B is little side B, and across from angle C is side little c. Okay, the formula goes like this. The area is one half, uh, let's take side A times side B times the sine of angle C. Now, I don't want you to get stuck on the letters too much. Okay, so let's look at this diagram here. The A side and the B side, let's just highlight those, are right here. The A and the B. Okay, so these are two sides. And then angle C, where is that? Angle C is right here. Okay, so angle C is the side uh, between, oh, uh, not side, it's the angle between the two sides. Okay, and if you have side angle side, this is a great formula to use. It does not have to be a right triangle. You don't have to know the base or the height. You just have to know side angle side. This is a great formula to use if we know two sides okay, and the included angle. And what does included angle mean? It means the angle between them. Okay, what else do we have? Here's another great formula. Okay, It's called Heron's formula. Heron's formula is great if you have all three sides. If you have side A, little side B, and side little c. Okay, so here's how the formula looks. The area is equal to the big square root, huge one. Make sure it's really long. And you have to do s. And then what you have to do is s minus little side a and it's got to take a turn with all of them. Then it's times the quantity s minus little side b and then it's got to be s minus little side c. Okay, And you're probably wondering, well what's an s? Oh, well s is a semi-perimeter. And what's a semi-perimeter? Well, I know that semi means half and perimeter means the sum of all three sides. So you have to first do a semi-perimeter calculation. So S would be one half of, then you take side A plus side B plus side C, and then you add them together, half of the sum. And then that's the S you would put in there. It's super long, but it's great if you have all three sides and no angles. So if you know all three sides, then please use Heron's formula. Again, this is finding the area of a triangle. Okay, not a side or anything, but the area. All right, let's do some practice. Let's draw a triangle, and I'm going to label it A, B, C, and then I'm going to put the information on the triangle. Okay, it says side little a is 8. So across from angle A, I'll put an 8. Side B is 6. Side B is located across from angle B. And it says the measure of angle C, which happens to be right here, is 30 degrees. Okay, I'm noticing that we have a side angle side. This would be an excellent time to use that formula. One half 
then you take the two sides, 8 times 6 times the sine of the angle between them, sine of 30. All right, let's do a calculation. Half of 8 is 4, 4 times 6 is 24, um, the sine of 30, wait a minute, sine of 30? We don't need to use our calculators, you guys know what sine of 30 is. Oh good, 1 half, okay. and so the area is 12. Area is 12, and we want to make sure we use units here. Nothing's listed, so we'll just say units squared for area. Okay. Um, if the number was not so nice, like 31, then you would go ahead and type this in. Please make sure that your mode is still set to degrees. Okay, and then you would just type 1 half, I like to type 0.5, times 8 times 6 times the sine of 30. Okay, you would just straight type it in like that. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Find the area of a triangle. Okay, so let's just draw a little triangle and then I'll label it up. It says, oh, the sides are 4, 5, 7. 4, 5, 7. Um, if you know all three sides, this is a great time to use Heron's formula. Okay, to do Heron's, you need to do that big radical with all the S's. So let me calculate the semi-perimeter first. Semi means half, and the perimeter of this outside triangle, 4 plus 5 plus 7, um, that's half of 16. Half of 16 is 8. Okay, so I know that the S is 8. So now I can go ahead and get my area started. Please make sure that all of your work has A equals or S equals. Everything should be labeled. I never want to see a bunch of calculations just written down on a piece of paper. This is a formula. I'm going to start area. The square root of. So S gets to go first just one time by itself. And then it's got to take a turn with all of them. So I have to do 8 minus the 4, and 8 minus the 5, and 8 minus the 7. Oh, let's make sure our radical gets a little bit longer to cover everything up. So area is 8 times 4, 8 minus 5 is 3, 8 minus 7 is 2. Um, I'm going to show you a variety of ways. If I did not have a calculator, what I would do is maybe break these up a little bit. I'm going to break up, oh wait a minute, 8 minus 7 is 1. There we go. Did you catch that? I hope so. I'm going to write 8 as 2 times 4, and there's another 4 and another 3. Okay, so when you look at a radical, if you ever have a pair of numbers, they get to come out of the radical. So then the answer would be 4, and then 2 and 3 would have to stay inside and then this would be units squared. Okay, um, If it says find an answer approximately, okay, A is approximately, this would be a good time, use the squigglies, to type it in. So let's see, the square root of 8 times 4 times 3 is approximately 9 point, let's see, I want to use two decimals in this class all the time, should I write 79? Nope, that's big. I gotta write 80. 9.80 units squared. Okay, so let's just write some notes. This answer here is approximately, it's been approximated, and this answer right here, since it's got the radical, is exact. So if the test says find your answer in exact form, please don't ask me how many decimals. No decimals. Oh, you know, this reminds me. Don't we have a, a, a program in our calculator for this? So first, what is 8 times 4 times 3? So it's radical 96. Let's go to program and try that square root program that we have. Remember, when you type in the square root, you don't want to close the parentheses. Oh, 4 times radical 6. Okay, So you can find exact answers with that program, don't forget. Okay, let's take a look at the next page here. Find the area of a segment of a circle. Okay, segment of a circle? Hmm, this is weird. We're going to have to refresh some of your geometry. Okay, so let's just start with this. If I draw a circle and I take this much of it, okay, 
What is that called? This is like chapter six all over again. Great review for our final, huh? This is called a sector. Okay, if it touches the center. I know that the circle has a radius of eight feet. So this is eight and this is eight. But that's not the segment. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract a triangle. What? Yeah, okay, so here, here's what it looks like. Draw a circle. Here's the sector. It's got the curvy, curvy edge. And if I draw a chord that goes from point on the circle to point on the circle, this is the triangle. I'm going to take the sector and remove that triangle, and I'm left with this curvy little edge. Okay, and that is called a segment of a circle, not a segment like of a line. Okay, um, this triangle right here has an 8 and an 8, right? The radius is 8. It says that the central angle is 70 degrees, so I guess we could get everything nice and labeled. And the idea here is we're going to take the sector, cut out the triangle, and that will leave us with the segment. Okay, when you do multi-step problems like this, I really want to see some nice labeled work. So let's change colors here. Um, we're going to say area, but we have to do a couple areas. So as a subscript, I want you to write area of sector. Area of sector is, okay, how do we find the area of a sector? Hmm. It's not half, it's not a quarter of the circle, it's like a fraction of the circle. What fraction is it? That angle there is 70, right? It's 70 degrees out of 360. That's a fraction of the area of the circle. The circle is pi and the radius is 8 squared. Okay. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to subtract, so here's my notation, the area of the triangle. So your subscript needs to say triangle. Okay. And then what that leaves us with is area of the segment. Okay, let's get the triangle going now. How are we going to find this much area? I'm noticing side, angle, side. Oh, let's use that new formula. One half, side, side, that's eight times eight times the sine of 70 degrees. I don't know that one from the unit circle, so we are going to have to use a calculator. Okay, I want you to write all the formulas out completely and pick up your calculator at the very end. And we're going to type it all in at once. We're not going to type something, chop it off, and then use it and then chop it. Your answer is going to be too off at the end. So first, let's do 70 out of 360. You could also use the fraction button if you like, times pi 8 squared. And then we're going to subtract this one right here. I'll type 0.5 for the half times 8 times 8 times the sine of 70. Okay, And the answer is approximately, because I'm going to have to round this to two places here, 9 point, should I write 0, 2? Nah, that's big. Let's write 0, 3. Okay. How about some units? Are there units listed? Oh yes, feet. Okay. So the area of that segment is feet squared. Okay. Remember, round two places at the very end. Remember, you always want to use units. Area would be squared. Okay, we got one more here. I see, oh, a trapezoid. And then I see a triangle that's been cut out of it. Okay, so the approach here is going to be figure out the trapezoid area. Okay, that's going to be too much area. Then we're going to have to minus the triangle. And then what we have left is the shaded. Okay, does that make sense? Trapezoid, take away triangle. Let's make sure we do nice labeled work here. Area of subscript, really low, very little here. Area of trapezoid. Okay, and then we're going to subtract area of triangle. Okay, and what's that going to leave us with? That's going to leave us with area of shaded. If it has a name, use the name. Um, this is just kind of a shaded area, so we'll say shaded. And I think the answer is going to be approximately equal to something. Okay, how do you do trapezoid? Um, is it base times height? No, it's not base times height, because that's a little base and that's a big base. Should I use the little one? 
or the big one. Mm. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll uh, use like a medium one. What is she talking about? You don't use the small, you don't use the large, you use the average. It's one half, and then I'll add four plus 11. Okay, as a reminder here, okay, area of trapezoid formula is one half, and then it's base one plus base two times height. That's the formula for it. Um, so let's multiply by 8.7. Okay, area of triangle has to come out. Um, this is a side, an angle, and a side. If you have two sides and the included angle, we use that fun formula, one half. Um, side, side, and then the sine of, what does that say, 42 degrees. Okay, so what we'll do is this, type all this in at once, and subtract that, and then what you're going to get is an answer right here. What I'd like for you to do is round it and use some units and put your answer right here in this box, and then when I see you tomorrow, I hope I have a happy face. Thanks, guys.